Hello everyone, I am Ninty and welcome once again to the Mario Kart DS Workshop, the most up-to-date tutorial series where you will learn how to create a custom track for Mario Kart DS. This is part 3, technically 4, of an ongoing series. Be sure to watch the last 3 videos if you haven't already. Today, we will be doing the following. Creating our KCL slash collision, learning our way around Mario Kart toolbox, editing the NKM which covers checkpoints, objects and more, and testing your track in console and emulator. Without further ado, let's get right into it! For this part, you will be mainly utilizing Mario Kart Toolbox. Last time, we left off making our NSPMD and NSPTX files with J3D Converter. Before we move on, I'll show you how to boot these files in our folder with the extracted files of the game so we can replace them. Open your location where your NSBMD and NSBTX files last were and locate the files. Then, go to your folder containing the extracted game data we created a while back. Click on Data, Data again, and then Course. This folder contains all the tracks and arenas of the game in their own subfolders. Locate the track you wish to replace. For this tutorial, I will use Figure 8 Circuit, which is internally named Cross Underscore Chorus. Ignore the folders with Chorus D in their name. These are just the multiplayer versions that download play players use. Open Cross Underscore Chorus Underscore Arc, and you'll see these files. Rename your NSBMD from whatever it was to Chorus Model and drop it on the Cross Chorus Arc folder, like so, to replace the original model with ours. Then, exit the subfolder and look for cross underscore course text underscore arc. We will drop our NSBTX. Rename the NSBTX to course model and replace it. With that, our files are replaced. To verify that it all went well, let's go to Mario Kart Toolbox. So, we've already been in Mario Kart Toolbox, but I didn't go into any detail whatsoever about its functions, which I will do now as I show you around the program. NKTV can edit multiple areas of Mario Kart DS, like the collision, the NKM, text, card stats, unlock parameters, and missions. When you open a ROM or project, the open tab is the courses tab, which shows all the courses with both their internal and external names. To open one, simply double click it, and a new window featuring a 3D view of the course will pop up. The controls here are pretty simple. Holding left on your mouse and moving will move the, cam the camera, and holding right will rotate it instead. Move the mouse wheel back and forth to zoom. I will detail this window later when we begin editing the NKM. Since we're here, open Figure Circuit to verify the model imported correctly. Seems like that's the case here. Up next is the Mission tab, which has all the missions alongside their locations and requirements. Double clicking on one will open the respective mission mode in came with the course. And right clicking a mission will give you the option to open or adjust the parameters of that mission, such as the type, character, and time needed. The objects tab is meant to show all the objects in the game and what they do, but this is a work in progress for the time being. In the S Hack 2, I made a full list of most objects in the game, which I will link in the description. The ROM tab has the entire file system for you to see. You can find a .bmg file and double click it here to edit it. Clicking on tool here shows the character card editor option. Click it and this window will open. In the 3D view, you can adjust the shown character's position within the shown card 
as well as the position of the front and back tires. To the left, there are four tabs. All these change different parameters for the currently selected card and character and are pretty self-explanatory. That covers a small section, small tour of Mario Kart TV's main area. The more in-depth part will come later once we get to NKM Avenue. Now, let's get started on the collision! Let's begin with making our collision file, also known as KCL. This determines how the racers can interact with the actual track inside the game, defining things such as what is road, off-road, wall, etc. An important part of making our KCL is that you should delete from your model any parts that the player is not guaranteed to touch during racing, to optimize the file. In our current model, we don't have to do it by much, but as your models get more complex, you'll definitely need to do so. Mario Kart Toolbox can only generate a KCL from an OBJ, so open Blender and open your .blend with your model. For now, let's delete these faces in the middle here, since they are walled up and the player is unlikely to reach them. Once that's done, click on Export, wait for an OBJ, and choose a location to export the OBJ. It's important to look in the export settings and make sure the model is completely triangulated with this option right here. Now, go into Mario Kart Toolbox and open the course that you put your custom model on, which in my case is Figure 8 Circuit. To start setting up the KCL, click on File, Import Collision, and look for your OBJ. Once you select it, a new window will appear. This window shows all the materials in your model and lets you assign an individual collision value to each one. The collision effect area lets you decide if this material will be a trigger for a certain effect, such as a sound in the game, a solid surface, which will be anything drivable, or simply a wall. Collision type lets you choose what type of collision the material will be. Here you can see all the drivable, wall, and other sorts of values the game has, and most of them are pretty self-explanatory. Finally, Basic Effect lets you choose the specific quality of that collision value. For example, if you chose Road, you can choose whether it's Normal Road, Dirt, Stone, Snow, and etc. And its Sound and Graphic Effect will change accordingly. Stage Color ID is the color effect that that specific collision should give when driven over it. This is useful for parts of your track that are darker or have a certain color. Likewise, for any parts that overlap another in the course, you can check transparent on map so the player icons will be transparent in the bottom screen when they pass by. Now that you know what everything does, set up each material with the appropriate collision. Once you're finished, click on Generate and click on this red leaf at the top left corner here to display the collision on the 3D view. If it worked, you'll notice these lines appear and hopefully match up with your visual model. With that, our collision is set up. Before we continue onward to the NKM, we should test our track to see if it all works well. Let's begin by adjusting the start position to our start line. Click on the top right here to switch to the 2DB, which will provide an overhead view of the track. 
All these points might seem confusing, but I'll explain them later. For now, look for the black dot that represented by a small card model in the 3D view is the start position, or KTPS. Move the dot to your start line by clicking and holding it, then dragging your mouse around and while still moving, hover over the start line and hit control on your keyboard to put it at the correct height. The arrow you see here is the rotation of the KTPS. You can change it by going to the right corner here and adjusting the location. For this, 180 should work nicely. With that done, save your changes and close this window. To be able to test your new changes, you have to review your project as a ROM, which you can easily do by clicking File, Export, Export NDS. Once your NDS file is built, feel free to test it in any of the following emulators, flashcards, or any homebrew loaders. For emulators, your best choices are Desmume and Melon DS. While an emulator should not be your primary way of testing, it's definitely the fastest way, and for an accurate experience, I absolutely recommend utilizing Melon DS. If you have a flashcard, simply drop your new ROM on it, and if you use a loader such as Twilight Menu++, just drop the ROM wherever needed. As far as all methods go, testing on flashcard is the most accurate method, since you are playing the ROM one-to-one -one on original hardware without any other nuances such as emulator or loader inaccuracies. It's a little difficult to explain. However, whichever method works best is up to you. I highly recommend being able to test on more than just emulation to not miss any potential issues with your track may have that only show up on console. That said, wherever you are, open your ROM and look for the track you replace. If it all went well, it should load correctly. Play around the track to get a feel for it and to be sure nothing looks off. And that concludes part 3 of this tutorial series. Today we learned how to replace files on a project, made a collision, and tested the track. As for the end game editing part, here's a funny story. It was originally going to be in this part, but the final video turned out to be 30 minutes long. When I went to export the video, HitFilm told me it will take about 9 hours to a day to export. As such, I had to cut the part in half after editing the whole thing. And that's how we're here. However, part 4, which will cover the NKM stuff I mentioned at the beginning, will also come out today. The video is totally ready to go, I just need to slice it and change some things. As such, it should be ready by the time you watch this video. As always, comment any doubts below, thanks for watching, and stay tuned for the next part!